Hi everyone, I'm Tom, and today I'm going to be losing at, tw I mean playing, Twa Solo, the King's Challenge. I did a playthrough last year, I think, for the main multiplayer game, so you can watch that if you're interested in the multiplayer. In this game, we are trying to rebuild Twa and try and prevent the marauders and other outside nastiness from getting in and messing up what we're doing. Marty is, of course, here kind of on the side of the marauders, really. He's here to let them in. Now, while the main game is designed by Sebastian Dujardin, Xavier George, and Alan Orban, the solo mode is designed by Shadi Torbay, who you might be familiar with from the Oniverse games, uh, Honorim and Arion and Sylveon, loads and loads and loads of them now, but very, very well versed in solo stuff. So I've done most of the setup here, but we need to do the initial placement, and that's putting our meeples in these buildings. There's the palace the bishopric and the city hall, and they are going to determine which dice you have control of on your turn. Although it's, it's not fixed, they're not strictly your dice, but we'll see that as we get in. So first of all, Leroy, who is my AI opponent, is going to place first, and to do that we roll two of the red, yellow, and white dice, and the highest numbers are going to determine the buildings that he built in. So that is two for city hall, and one for the palace. So the numbers on the dice don't matter anymore. It was just to determine the highest ones. Leroy has got a preference for each of the buildings, and it's based in how we're going to be able to put more meeples in there later. So the way that the bishopric and the city hall work, the meeples are in rows, and when you, t when you spend dice of particular numbers, they are going to push meeples out in favor of whoever is putting them in. Similarly here, but there's three to a row, and in the palace over here, it's just one per section. But higher numbers in Twa are often, you want to use them on other actions, because high numbers can be quite important. So you're less likely to use the higher numbers for these buildings, which is kind of what Leroy's initial placement is based on. So according to Leroy's chart, and he's got meeples of two different colours, by the way, because he needs more than I do. So his, uh, his top choice is there, and then there, because you want to be in this leftmost row, because if you're in the rightmost row, if anyone ever takes that action, you're going to be slid out of there. And finally, in the palace, and six is the best one. And then it's up to me, I get to place two, so Leroy places three, I place two, we alternate until... The, the buildings are filled and I won't have any meeples in my personal supply. So they determine the dice that you're going to get and we don't know which buildings are going to be out in this game yet. But generally, the yellow buildings will concern getting money and there is an, an always action, an action that's available to everybody where you can spend yellow dice to get some money. The red dice will often be used to combat these events and do more military kind of things. And the white dice involve uh, building in the cathedral here, but often kind of manipul dice manipulation abilities. But there's a lot of variability in what actually comes out. It's not exclusively that kind of stuff. I'll say as well, I've got the Ladies of Trois expansion, and the King's Challenge is just for base Trois, so I haven't got any of those extra uh, modules turned on, all the purple dice, but some of the cards may be from the Ladies of Trois. So I would like to have some money, and yeah, I do want some kind of military presence, but I like the idea of being in here before Leroy's even got in there. Yeah, that's the last chance of being on the left row there, so I'm going to stick with that. So again, Leroy rolls three dice. And so what is that? Three is the highest there, so two in the bishopric and one in the palace. So the next best thing in the palace is five. And then in the bishopric, this is the best, and then... This is the best. It's back to me, and I'm gonna go, yeah, bishopric, and yeah, let's go for the palace. Because you're not, you're not tied to having an even number of any of the buildings, same for the multiplayer game as well. It's up to you, kind of what's left for you as we get towards the end of the placement, but also uh, what's what you would like. Because dice cost money as well, that's worth noting that we get an income at the start of every round, and then for every person that you have in the palace, you lose two denier. Denier? And you lose one for everyone in the bishopric, and you lose nothing for everyone in City Hall. Okay, Leroy. 
I'm only learning every time I uh, every time I think of Leroy, I think of LeChuck instead. Okay, so he's going in. If there's a tie, by the way, it's resolved in red is better than yellow, it's better than white. But there the tie was both red, so it didn't matter. So he is going in the bishopric. The best is down there. And then he's going in the city hall. The best is... Which one's the best? It's there, isn't it? And then finally, out into the palace. And so my last two... I'd like more military stuff, but I kind of like the idea of having more money. I could just go for a load of yellow dice and then maybe buy good red dice. Because Leroy, of course, doesn't have to worry about any money. Yeah, I'm just going to go all for City Hall. Let's see how that goes. And then, yeah, there's, there's no need to roll dice or anything for this last one because Leroy just takes the last three spaces. So we determine who goes first. Let's say I'll, I'll be white. Leroy can be yellow. See who goes first. Leroy is going first. So what we do in a round of Twa, the first thing is reveal the activity cards. So we reveal the number ones, and these are going to be places where we can eventually put Meeples to activate their abilities. I'll get into those when it comes to uh, the actions and what we're going to do there. Then we have income and salaries. So Leroy is not bothered about that. I get 10 to begin with, minus two, because I've got one in there, minus another two, because I've got two in there. So I'm going to get six deniers, denier, for my income. And these, by the way, these don't come with the game. Uh, I get asked a lot about this on the original 12 playthrough. They are available in the Board Game Geek Files section. I printed them out a long time ago. And then we assemble the workforce. So that is getting your dice together and rolling them. So I get three yellows, two white, and a red. And they're going to go in my section. I'm going to need a better place to roll the dice, aren't I, when there starts being cubes in the cathedral. And not great numbers. And everything else, apart from the black dice, everything else goes to Leroy. And Leroy orders his dice in a particular way. He orders them by value and then by color. Red is better than yellow, is better than white. So I'll just do that. And there we go, there's two columns of his dice. Then we have events. We always have Marauders here, that is printed on the board. But for the events we draw a red event card. War. And this tells us to draw a white event card. So there's always going to be two, but the red card determines whether it's going to be a white or a yellow. And so we have Monk there. Next up, we take as many black dice as we can see on the events. So there is one here and two on the war card. And so let's get rid of these for now. We roll these, and these are going to need to be combated later on. So we've got a six, a four, and a one. Then we resolve the events from left to right. So there is nothing to see on these. The monk wants us to roll a black die. And that's going to be a six and place a neutral meeple on the highest victory point space on an activity card. Whenever the game refers to neutral meeples in the King's Challenge, it refers to Leroy. So Leroy has, uh, has basically just uh, earned two points there. So now we need to conquer the black dice we rolled from the event cards in player order. So it's Leroy's turn to combat a dice. So when combating black dice, you need to spend, well, you need to spend your own dice. You cannot buy other people's dice. Now you can put different dice together. You want to, you have to combat at least one dice. So if it was me, I would have to spend a couple because the, the highest die is a six. Now Leroy has to combat one instead. Now when Leroy combats black dice, he uses his strongest available die. So he's gonna use one of his red sixes. And now red dice are special for this because they count as double. Because they are military dice, they count as double when combating these events. So Leroy could do the whole thing and get a load of influence for himself. But there is a flip side, and this is the same in the multiplayer game. He can choose to only do one of them, which is what he always chooses to do. He will just eliminate the highest black die, so his goes away and the black die goes away. And you would normally get an influence, but Leroy does not bother with money or influence. So now it comes to me, and I need to combat a black die. So I could manipulate my dice 
So we do all have on the other side of our player aids how dice can be manipulated. So one of the things that I can do is re-roll a die by spending an influence. I start the game with four. Or I could spend four influence to flip three of my dice. My problem with doing that is that, yeah, if you, if you make a load of your dice good, that's kind of helping Leroy, who will buy your dice. And that's true of multiplayer as well. It's good at uh, simulating that because anyone can buy your dice in Twa. So I could just spend this red die. I wouldn't have one this round, but I would combat both of these and earn myself two influence. I think I'm going to do that. I am worried about the monk event because it's just letting Leroy into all of these activity cards without even spending dice or taking actions for it. So I'm going to spend my red dice so it has value six. I think what I'm actually going to do, I am going to use my white, yeah, my white five to get rid of those. I would like a red die because I think the diplomat could be good at getting rid of these events. Okay, so my turn will take place just the same as the normal game, what a normal player would do. I can buy Leroy's dice. Since he doesn't care about money, the money just goes to the bank. But Leroy, for his turn, rolls two black dice and adds their value together. And we look at a table to see what he does. He spends a number of dice, but he isn't really concerned with the value and color of dice, only in ranking them. An action will say he spends three dice, he would spend his three best dice. And he will take turns until all of his dice have been used. So let's go to that table now, since that's what we want to be seeing for the rest of the game. And I'll get it up on screen, I hope. So since he's first player, let's see what he's going to do. He's rolled a five, and that tells us that Leroy resolves the rightmost event. So that's kind of handled something for me. I did want to do this. Uh, so he spends a die for every free banner on the card. So he's going to spend one, two, three, four dice. So much for using his red dice for anything. I could use his red one. And so what would normally happen is we activate these cards and put cubes on them. And every time you put a cube on, you get an influence. Lurie doesn't care about that. And when the card is fully resolved and all the banners are full up, we look at who contributed the most. Whoever contributed the most gets four points, second place gets two points, and whoever contributed the most gets to keep the card. Now, if a player does the whole thing by themselves, they get the card and they get both places points. So Leroy is getting six points and the card. Cover up the uh, end of the game points table. So that was Leroy's turn. So what do I want to do now? So let's have a look at, I can do plenty of things and I can buy Leroy's dice to make mine better. So you take actions in Twa and those actions are taken with groups of dice. So groups are dice of the same color and you can have one, two or three dice in a group. You can buy dice from the other players. There is a little kind of helpful thing over here. So if I just wanted to buy one of Leroy's dice, to, to, to take an action with, then it would be two money. That would be my only die I would be using for that action. If you are going to be doing an action that costs two dice, then each die you are buying from other players costs you four. So I could use one of my own and one of Leroy's and pay him four, or I could use two of Leroy's, but I'd have to pay him eight. And if you are going to do a group of three, each die you buy from other people costs you six. The more powerful the action you are going to be taking, hopefully, the more money it's going to cost you for each of those dice. So what can I do with my actions? Well, all sorts. I can activate these activity cards. I can construct the cathedral. I can fight the events. I can place a citizen in one of the buildings and get some more dice in a future round. I can use agriculture to get some money or I can pass. I don't have to wait until I've used everything. I can pass and I will get a money every time the turn comes back around to me because Leroy will keep going until the end of his dice. So it'd be silly to do that now. I want to get something done. So let's look at these activity cards. So first up here, we've got the artisan. Now, if I used his action, I would be able to convert influence to money. And I've got a decent amount in yellow dice. That reminds me, actually, I'm missing two influence for fighting those uh, event dice, aren't I? The, the black dice. So that's tempting because I do have decent yellow dice. We have Diplomat down here who helps you spend influence to put cubes straight on these cards and bypass their normal 
way of doing things. And Augustine up there in the white, when you take the actions, you put cubes of your colour on that card, and you can later spend those cubes to add a yellow six to your group for taking an action. I think I'm going to activate an activity card. And the first time you activate an activity card, you've got to have a meeple on the card. To do this, you need to spend the amount of money shown. So I want to go on Artisan. It's going to cost me five denier. And I need a meeple. I haven't got one in my personal supply, but we can see from here I can spend two influence to get one. So we can slide that down and I can get a meeple into my personal supply. And that is going to go on the Artisan. I'm going to score a point at the end of the game. So we do also have to think about the dice that I am doing the action with. Now, the way things work in Twa, you'll see dice over two or over in the Artisan, it's dice over four. So the total value of the pips in the group you are sending is divided by four. And that's how many times you can perform this action. So I would like to go with more than just I could go here and do it once and grab six money and I would have made one on it. But I think I'm going to spend an influence to re-roll this one and see if I can get something better. I could spend four to flip them, but that would be all of my influence. So that's a five. I like that. I'm going to send. I could send my five and my three there and I could do this twice because that's eight divided by four. That's two activations of spending influence. So one, two influence to get six money at a time. I've now got... 12 plus the six I had, I've got 18 money. So that's going to give me some good dice buying power, I think. Back to Leroy. And what's he going to do? He has got a six, which means Leroy places a tradesman meeple. This costs him one die. Doesn't buy any of mine yet. The actions will tell you when he buys my dice. And he will place it on the spot that gives him the most points. If there is a tie like there is here, there's two victory points available for either of these. His usual tie break, red is better than yellow, is better than white. So he will place a meeple on the diplomat there. I think I would, I would definitely like to be on the diplomat there. Just kind of thinking, I've, I've only got one more influence. I can get more influence, of course, by, you know, trying to clear out these events. I think, first of all, I would like a couple of influence if I can get them. I am going to spend, yes, I'm gonna use one of, I'm gonna use my red, th my yellow three, and then, shall I buy his? Yes. I'm going to do the Marauders event here. So you can spend any color of dice on Marauders, it's divided by three, and that's how many cubes you get to put on. So I need to pay four to use his die because I am doing a two die group. So that just gets paid to the bank. And I can put two of my cubes over this event. So you still get the victory points, you just don't get to keep a card if you did the most here. And for each cube I placed, I get an influence. That's why you're covering up these flags. So they go away. Because the diplomat action is going to need cubes. I just hope that I've still got that red three when it comes back around to my turn. So Leroy, he has rolled nine and he resolves the rightmost event. Now, this is, uh, this is an unfortunate situation, really, uh, because, yes, he gets to do war. Look how many times, look how many activations this would need. Now, it does divide the die by two, so if you've got a decent red group, you've got a good chance of doing a load of this. This would be a great way of getting a lot of influence. Uh, so he would spend a die for every cube he needed. I don't think he's quite got enough. He would need seven dice. He hasn't got enough. He doesn't buy any of mine because it didn't say for him to buy any of mine off me. He just uses everything that he's got and he's still allowed to complete the action. So he gets three points for it and another event card. Okay, well that limits me because uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get to pass and get a load of money. And I was gonna try and get on the Augustine card there, but I will get on the Diplomat card, even though yeah, the cube it lets me do is not great. Or, although I could, yeah, this, this is actually not too bad, I don't think. I am going to, I could try and re-roll this but I would need a six to be able to do this twice. So let's just do it once. So I'm going to activate the diplomat card. It's six money. I get four back. Let's stick one in and get five. And so I need a meeple. So I'm going to spend two influence to get one into my personal supply, which is going to go out onto the card there. And so for every activation, which is just one, I can spend an influence to place a cube on a card. So I'm going to do that. I place my cube over here. And as usual, it gets me an influence. So that goes away. 
Okay, while trying to find a clarification about something else, I've discovered that there is something missing from the original French translation of these rules, where actually, I've been playing it wrong and it should be even harder for me. I've never won the solo game, by the way. This could be the big day, couldn't it? Uh, but uh, Leroy actually keeps going until there are no dice on the board. So let's find out what he's going to do. He's going to do Snake Eyes, gain three victory points. Now, this would normally be with three dice and one is bought from me for six money. So actually, I wasn't going to be able to do anything with this. So although he's gotten another three points, you can kind of see the disparity in points right now. <laughs> I haven't managed anything. And he's got 12 points. But that's sometimes the way it goes. So I would pass now. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's just the end of the round. Leroy would pass because there's nothing left on the board. You only get money if you pass while there are still dice out there. So end of the round, we retrieve expelled citizens. Citizens can get expelled from these buildings and you would now get them back into your personal supply. And then we change the start player. So here we go. We put it in the counted events space, eh? Because that's going to be empty. And we start round two. But I think I'm going to stop this part for there. If you would like to see the rest of this solo game and see how badly I get beaten, then join me for part two. Or if you'd like to know what I think about Twas solo mode, then that will be linked in the description or on the screen also. Thank you for joining me here, though. If you'd like to help me keep making playthroughs, it's patreon.com forward slash slickdrips, and any contribution would be massively appreciated. Thanks for watching, though, and I'll see you wherever you end up. Bye, everyone.